breaking, Trump just captured him in the middle of the night, he's finally in custody. While the entire nation is focused on President Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, the commander-in-chief hasn't broken stride and rightfully so. He's been quietly and diligently working at one massive mission he's secretly been on outside the public eye and now an exceptionally key person is in custody. It's fair to say that from here, things are about to get really bad for certain people who have already been under a heaping dose of scrutiny. Now, their secrets are second from coming out in interrogation as long-awaited justice is finally within reach. There have been some massive scandals in our country over the last couple of years, none of which have Trump at the center of them despite what liberals would love to say. Among the most devastating have left a number of people dead and had we not elected someone like Trump as president, they may have been forgotten. Hillary Clinton has been tied to a lot of sudden and suspicious deaths stemming from what people knew and were insistent on exposing about her. She abides by the philosophy that dead men don't talk which have spared her a lot of criminal charges. Until now, there are those out there with blood on their hands who have done Hillary's dirty work and now one of the most important people who had a key role in her biggest scandal is now in custody. CBS News reports. U.S. officials say special operations forces have captured a key militant in the 2012 Benghazi attack on a U.S. consulate that left four Americans dead. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin confirms. A U.S. official identified the suspect as Mustafa Al-Imam, Martin reports. The commandos captured the man in Libya just before midnight local time on Sunday and are transporting him back to the U.S., officials told the Associated Press. The suspect is in the custody of the Department of Justice and is expected to arrive within the next two days on a military plane according to one of the officials. The officials said the mission was approved by President Donald Trump and done in coordination with Libya's internationally recognized government. The officials, who weren't authorized to speak publicly to the matter and demanded anonymity, would not say where exactly he was captured. The September 2012 assault killed Ambassador Chris Stevens, U.S. State Department computer expert Sean Smith and CIA contractors Glenn Doherty and Tyrone Woods. Had it not been for Trump in office, the victims of Benghazi would have had no chance just as since Hillary would have swept the attack under the rug to protect herself and cover her actions that led to this punishing attack. Stevens and Smith died in the burning diplomatic outpost despite efforts to rescue them. Woods and Doherty died nearly eight hours later in a mortar attack on a nearby CIA complex, CBS added. This is another step toward the damning answers that Hillary has been trying to hide from as another of the terroristic killers was caught on the president's watch who has made this investigation a priority. Earlier this month, another man accused in the attack, Abu Qatala, went on trial in federal court in Washington. Qatala has pleaded not guilty to the 18 charges against him including the murder of an internationally protected person, providing material support to terrorists and destroying U.S. property while causing death, CBS News explained. The attack was the fodder of multiple congressional investigations to determine what went wrong and whether the Obama administration misled the public on the details of the bloody assault. Initial accounts provided by administration officials, notably former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Susan Rice, said the attack had grown out of a protest against an anti-Muslim internet film. Later, the administration said it was a planned terrorist attack. A two-year investigation by a House Benghazi committee focused heavily on Clinton's role and whether security at the compounds and the response to the attack was sufficient. It was the Benghazi probe that revealed Clinton used a private email server for government work prompting an FBI investigation that proved to be an albatross in her presidential campaign. This comes at the start of a new week for Hillary who had a particularly rough weekend when her crimes stacking up against her, particularly after she was suspected in the death of another victim and the ever-increasing body count covered in her fingerprints. Information hounds have their paws deep in the dirt as they dig up ghosts of Hillary Clinton's past and search for any and all evidence linking her to the death of a prominent figure in American history. Truth seekers look for evidence that could lead to her to indictment and incarceration, but those who seek are coming up with mixed results.
the hottest trending controversial conspiracy slithers back into relevancy in the wake of JFK's classified files being released, even though numerous items were redacted. This theory plots Hillary Clinton against JFK Jr. and suggests that she's directly, or indirectly, responsible for the plane crash that left JFK Jr. and two others dead, thus paving the way for Clinton to win an easy seat in the Senate and further her career. Look back to 1999 when numerous New York residents fancied JFK Jr. the front-runner in the Senate election taking place in the year 2000. A young charismatic man like his father, JFK Jr. would have had an easy victory over Hillary Clinton if he had run for Senate in 2000, but any possibility of him entering into the election was halted midair with the crash of the aircraft he was in. A midnight flight and an unfortunate demise of a budding personality who could have carried on the legacy of his father had it not been for that harrowing flight that ended it all. Many sources say JFK Jr. was not 100% set on running for Senate, but if he did, it would have been an overwhelming victory. Sources like your newswire point to Hillary Clinton as the reason JFK Jr.'s plane exploded and crashed. The website suggests that Hillary had no intention of returning to Arkansas and her only goal was to win a seat in the New York Senate, no matter what it took. The source allows readers to believe, without truly saying so, that Hillary Clinton was responsible for the murder of JFK Jr. based on the details of the event, in which it's believed that JFK Jr. was flying the plane in the nighttime and he had called the radio tower for something, then randomly exploded. One has to wonder what caused the explosion. The website then discusses the possible events that suggest the Clintons covered this up very quickly by preparing a Navy funeral service, even though JFK Jr. did not serve in the Navy. This all happened after a search located JFK Jr. and his passengers' bodies in the water. Whether that death is proven to be connected to the Clintons or not, there's no denying the part that Hillary played in Benghazi. Now. One of the terrorists doing the killing just might provide clues, but at least will be held accountable in a way that Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton would have never done. Ver done.